You want to draw lines on a map visual like this? Well, that is now possible using the new path layer that was added to the Azure Map Power BI visual, which can be super helpful if you, for example, work in logistics and you want to plot the routes on a map. So let's see how we can create this example from scratch. Now, the first thing that you need to check is that you're on the November 24 version or later, which you can check by going here to help and then click on about, and that gives you the version that you're currently working on. All right. Now, for our example, we are looking at four different deliverers of Amazon in New York City, and we want to plot their route on a map. And to add some extra flavor to it, I also want to have the option to see how they walk their routes over time during a certain day. And here in the bottom right corner, you see I've added a play button with the current time in the day. And when I click on it, then we can see the deliveries that were made during the day until that time. Now, that gives a nice little extra dynamic element. All right, so let's go over all of the steps to create this map visual. Now, first of all, we need to insert an Azure map visual. Now, let me put it over here and let's make it a little bit bigger. Now, then, of course, we need a location field or latitude and longitude. Now, I have latitude and longitude data, so let's go here to latitude and click on the delivery data set and pick the latitude field. And the same thing I'm going to do for longitude. And that gives me all of the deliveries that were made by these four deliverers, but I don't see at the moment what delivery was done by which deliverer. So I'm going to go here to the legend and then pick the deliverer name. All right. So that we can see which deliverer did what delivery. All right. Now, the next thing that I want to do is, well, draw lines between these points so that I can see where did the deliverer start and where did the deliverer make his or her last delivery. Now, for that, we're going to make use of the new path layer. Now, you see there are two new drop zones, path ID and point order. Now, what is path ID? Well, basically, we can draw separate lines, separate paths. And that ID, well, you need to add to the data set. So let's jump to the underlying table. And here you see we have the latitude, the longitude, we have a timestamp for when the delivery was made. And we also have the deliverer name. And for each deliverer, I want to have a separate line. So I created a path ID so that I have a unique number for the line for the path that I want to draw for each deliverer. So Chris Taylor, path ID three. And if I scroll down, you see Jason Clark, path ID four. So the path ID column is what I'm going to use on the path ID drop zone. All right, so let me select it from deliveries. So over here we have path ID. And well, that looks a little bit strange. Probably the deliverer was not going crisscross through New York City like this. Now, and that's where the point order comes in. So in what order do we want to connect the dots? Now, let's go back again to the underlying table. And you see over here, I added also a column with the delivery time. And in that order, I want to connect the dots. So let's go back to the report view, select the Azure Map Visual, and then here for point order, I'm going to select the time. And ta-da, that looks much better. Now, let me interrupt just for a second. Now, if you like this video and you want to learn more about data preparation, modeling, visualization, and deployment in Power BI, then check out my latest PL300 Power BI training, which gets you ready to become Power BI certified. All right, now let's go back to the video. Now, all of these dots are nicely connected with a line. Now, why do they all start over there because probably that's the warehouse. Now to double check that, we can play around with formatting. So we can go here to formatting, map settings, and then here, if I would go for, let's say satellite, and then zoom in, you see, uh, that looks like a warehouse. All right, so that seems plausible. They start there and they end there. Now maybe not the prettiest, so let me just change that to grayscale light. And of course, we can make some other formatting changes as well. For example, the title I don't really need over here. And then we can go to the legend. Let's put it in the center. So center top. And then let's go to the bubble layer. I want them to be a little bit smaller. So maybe three is enough. And the border, well, maybe we don't really need the border. So over here, I'm going to put the width to zero. And let's then also go to size and style. Now, over here, I want to have a visual border. Let's make it a little bit lighter, just like this. Make the corners rounded. 
Let's put the padding to zero from every side. And let's add a little bit of shadow. No, this is a bit too much, so I'm gonna go for a lighter gray. And there you go, here we have our delivery routes drawn on a map visual. Now, the next thing that I wanna do is to add that filter functionality for the time, so that we can pick a time and we can only see those deliveries that were made until that time. All right, now to set that up, we need a time dimension table. Now, let me show you in the model. Now, here we have our deliveries table. There is our time dimension, and I can connect the two using the time field. So over here I have time, and over here I have time. Just drag and drop one on top of the other. Cardinality is one, two, many, and the filter direction, single, from the time dimension table to deliveries. Now, let me also show you the time dimension table over here in the data view. And there it is. Now, on purpose, I kept it very simple. We have the time, the minute, the hour, and we have quarter buckets. Now, how could you create that? You could do it with a DAX formula, or you could, can do it in Power Query, just like with a day dimension table. And if you want to do it in DAX, well, just copy the code from here. Now, one important thing to mention here is that on purpose, I start my time dimension table at six o'clock in the morning, six times 60, and it's 360, that brings me to six o'clock in the morning and ends at midnight, all right? Now, these lines, they just create the columns, our time, and the quarter buckets. Now, let's go back to our report view. And now I want to add that play button visual that lets me filter the map visual for different points in time. Now, this is a custom visual, which you can add by going over here to the builds panel, then click on these three dots, get more visuals. And then here we can search for play access visual. Now, there it is, just click on it and then click again on add. And now we have that new custom visual popping up here in the builds panel. Now, select it and let's put it here to the right hand side of our map visual. Now I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller and then we can select the field that we want to use for the filtering, which is going to come from dim time. Now I have these quarter buckets because I don't want to filter on every single minute. So let's select over here the quarter field and it will also show a title and label. That's not what I need. So I go here to format, turn the title off, turn enable caption off and I just keep these play buttons. Now, of course, I still want to know what time we are filtering on. And for that, we can use a card visual. Now, it doesn't have to be anything fancy, so let's go for the old card visual. So here in the build panel, select the old one, and I'm going to put it right below the play buttons. Let's make it just as wide, all right. And then on it, I'm going to show from the dim time table, the quarter buckets. All right, so we have the time. And now when I click on play, let's see what happens. And hmm. This is a little bit weird. You see it's uh, zooming out and then zooming in again, all right, because auto zoom is turned on. However, this is not the result that I was hoping for. I was hoping that it would show all the lines and keep the points from previous deliveries. But the thing is, well, it's putting filters in place on that specific time. So if I don't have any delivery here for 11.45, well, nothing shows. Right? And if we go to the map visual, click here on filters, you see, I'm filtering on specifically that time. So I'm not seeing all of the deliveries before that time. Now, how can we work around that? Now, to make this work, we have to go back to the modeling view and we have to disconnect dim time from the deliveries table. And if I then go back to the report view and again click here on play, then let's see what happens this time. Now, you see, we are filtering for different points in time, but nothing happens to the visual. Of course, because the filter is not being passed on from that dim time table to the deliveries table. So as a next step, what we're gonna do is set up a filter measure. And that measure is going to keep all of the deliveries before that selected delivery time that we're filtering on. All right, so I'm gonna go here to the data pane and I'm going to add a filter measure to the dim time table. So click on the three dots, new measure. Now let's call this measure time filter. And we're going to use an if function because we want to check the delivery time. So select the value, which returns only a value if there's one. Now here for the deliveries, we have the time. All right, I wanna check if this is before or equal to the, well, the 
quarter field, but also here we need to have a selected value function. So here we have our quarter buckets. All right. And if it is, then I want to return a one, otherwise zero. Now that's it. Now let's see this measure in action. So I'm going to select the map visual, then open the filter pane, take your time filter measure, add it over here for filters on this visual, and that measure needs to return one. Otherwise, I don't want to see the data points. Now, once you apply the filter, you will see no data points popping up because there were no deliveries made before six o'clock. But now click here on the play button and you will see it starts drawing the routes, the deliveries that were made for our different deliverers in New York City. Now, if you think hmm, this is a little bit slow, we can speed it up, of course. So let me just pause it. Let's then go back here to formatting, animation settings, and here we have the time that it takes. So if I put this down to, let's say, 250, and let's reset it by clicking here on stop, and then hit that play button again, now it will be much quicker. Now when the animation ends, well, no data points show anymore. And maybe you actually do want to see the connected lines with all of the deliveries that were made. Now, if you want that, what you can do is go back to that measure. And then we just have to extend this a little bit where we can add an or condition and say not is filtered dim time. And that's it. So what this does is that when we are not applying a filter using that play button, right? When we don't run the animation, then there's no filter in place. And then we want to, well, show all of the data points. So return a one. All right, so everything is set up. Now, probably I would nicely integrate the play button and the time over here in the map so that it looks as if it's part of it. And let me just move the map a little bit so that it's visible. There you go. And then we can also resize this play button so that it's nicely aligned with the time. And let's move it down a little bit closer to the play buttons. There you go. And then here in the selection pane, and we can also group them together. So over here we have the card, the quarter filter, and the map visual. Click on the three dots, group, and let's rename it to map. Now let's see the end result. Let's hit that play button one last time. And ta-da, our line paths are dynamically being drawn and we see the deliveries that were being made in that day up to the selected time that we see in the bottom right corner. Now, let me know your thoughts, put it in the comment section below. Do you have any other ideas of how we can use that new path layer in the Azure Map Visual? then share it with us. Now, if you want to learn more about map visuals in Power BI, then check out these videos over here. If you want to build reports together with me, then check out my design training over there. Now, thank you for watching and see you in the next video.